everyone, my name is Rachel Corey and I am so excited to be here with you today. For those of you that um, were with us during the Heat Press for Profit might be a little familiar with this presentation um, about outerwear. So we are gonna be covering deep diving into all things outerwear. Um, we actually have a special guest today. So the presentation is gonna be a little bit different from the Heat Press for Profit um, in that I'm not presenting by myself and we have revamped all of the garments to be springtime focused. So rain jackets, lighter jackets. Um, we're gonna walk through some of the different pieces we picked and why we picked them and then some of the decoration. We will walk you through so we do have some live decoration at the end and then how you're gonna make a profit. So the most important part of this presentation, right, is how are we gonna make our money here? Um, so I am partnered here today with a wonderful um, partner of mine from Sanmar. So I'm gonna bounce it over to Fred to introduce and say hello. Hello, everybody. How are you? Uh, my name is Fred Hickman. I'm a national account manager for Sanmar, and uh, I partner with Rachel quite a bit uh, on my national accounts. We do a lot of collaborating together, and she asked me to be a part of this, and I said, absolutely. I just love to bring a little bit of knowledge to the table. Um, first of all, I want to say to everybody, if you are uh, a part of the winter storm, if you're you know, uh, hunkered down and, and you're, you know, maybe without power or something like that. Um, we're thinking about you. So I hope you uh, guys are all safe out there. Awesome. Um, yes. And Fred and I are both coming to you from Midwest State. So we are, we are in it with you if you're experiencing it. Um, so we before we... Out here. Do what? Power. <laughs> power. We are up and rolling in Michigan because it's like another day in paradise when you have eight to 10 inches of snow. Um, okay, so if you guys were here for the Heat Press for Profit, this is going to look a little familiar in the sense of how we have lumped our um, outerwear into different segments. So instead of covering outerwear from zero to 100, what we've done is we've taken each different segment that we've seen most relevant and most popular um, and categorized them into different groups. So we have your three groups, first being corporate. So corporate's going to be uh, more techy, trendy, upper scale, maybe a higher end garment that you can decorate with some um, high end finishes and ticket at a higher cost. Um, then we have our retail, which is going to enable you as a decorator to be very trendy with your artwork um, using glitters, metallics, some pizzazz when you're decorating um, instead of just your traditional left chest. So it's going to really open up to unique placements. Um, multiple different locations, which is super user friendly with heat printing. Um, so retail is really going to open that whole box. And I'm really going to lump a lot of like our hobbyists and crafters into retailers. So like Etsy shops, um, anything in that realm of online uh, sales. And then we're going to have our workwear, which is really like essential workers, um, car hearts, thicker garments, maybe something that requires reflectivity. Um, so we have those three categories, so your corporate, your retail, and your workwear. And we're going to walk through a few different pieces, um, men's and women's styles for both, so that you can kind of get a better idea of how to price these and how to decorate them. So I'm going to pass it back over to Fred if you want to walk through um, the pieces we picked and why we picked them. So, so let's talk about the uh, corporate set first, right? Actually, I want to back up for a second. You mentioned the hobby industry, and that is an absolutely huge, wide open space for people to be in. So I'm glad you brought that up, Rachel. Um, so what we've got back here are some examples of when Rachel and I were collaborating. What, some, what are some products that actually work really well? Uh, we're all dealing with the work from home trend, so we know that that's relevant for our, our customer base. And so we actually have a set of pieces here that work and think of that maybe as a healthcare. Like healthcare is a really big uh, vertical market right now. A lot of people are uh, uh, trying to find places uh, to do business. And I think that for most part, uh, there's a healthcare setting somewhere near you. Um, and so what we picked was this ladies transition piece. And what I really like about this ladies transition piece is that we just started off with a full decoration right up here on the left chest. I don't know if you can see that or not, but Rachel did a great job of putting this appropriately up here on the right-hand side. This is uh, what we call kind of an asymmetrical design where we run the zipper from like a top right shoulder down to a lower left hand. 
And what we did was what we call a little bit of a peekaboo. So as I unzip this, we scripted the logo right behind there. Are we able to see that? I hope so. so yeah, you can see it a little bit. So it's nice um, to kind of play on Fred too, is it kind of gives you from a distance, you can see a little bit of that tonal look that's super trendy right now without being super um, muted with the tonal. Yeah, and of course, you know, the jacket's designed to be worn open, but what we really liked about this way was just kind of a casual opening right there, a little hidden uh, logo right there, but then when we zip her back up full, really kind of nice appropriate. So you've got a kind of what we call a two-way uh, identification opportunity right there. So I really like this piece, and it's part of our OGO line, and that's a fashion brand that uh, you might be familiar with if you've been dealing with Sandmark for a while. The other piece um, is a is a men's jacket, so that's a kind of a hybrid bird. So it's a shirt jacket, and uh, the piece that we chose uh, on this, we used a, a leather decoration style on the left chest. Now I do have an extra one because I didn't want to take it off of the mannequin, but this is a reversible jacket, right? So we decorated the outer part on the nylon side, the non uh, puffy side, and then. You can just pull the shirt sleeves in and out, flip the collar over, and now you've got another area out here that you could decorate as well. These pieces are really trendy. They work well for a lot of different corporate uh, marketplaces, and, and this men's piece is definitely something that you're going to see out uh, in the retail marketplace. So that that Fred was showing on the left chest is the leather patch that's available at Sol's. Um, the first product was Ultra Weed, and then jump through just so that we can keep track of which products are. The first one was Ultra Weed, right? Ultra Weed, yep. Yeah, this is just an example because uh, I didn't get to do a good close up, uh, Rachel. This is a close up of the, um, you know, a leather laser yep. applied on a hat. And we did this as, a, as an opportunity for some of the customers that were in Las Vegas when we were able to travel uh, a year and a half ago. Back, it feels like 100 years ago. It feels like 100 years ago. But that was a really good collaboration that we did. So we came up with a theme, and then we decorated some product, and we had a kit. You know, kitting is a big deal. Um, maybe we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, today. But being able to pack multiple items together in a box and then deliver that to uh, your stakeholders or your customers. Absolutely. Did you want to cover any other pieces while we're stopped here? Um, we can go on. If we wanted to go to the retail pieces, we can move up over to these two pieces, too. Okay. Um, so we had uh, introduced a while back a men's casual knit selection, right? And so what this piece was when Rachel and I were talking about it was something that we could use as a layering piece. Because again, you can see I'm layering several pieces. I've got a t-shirt, I've got a dress shirt. I have a quarter zip on, of course, decorated by Rachel right here. This is uh, silicone and then a vest. And so what we wanted to do was pick up a very nice complimentary piece for men and we pulled a full zip uh, men's knit piece and then i believe this is flocking right Rachel? yep that's our soft flock right so we picked that and um, the way i merchandise my mannequin i used a carhartt uh performance shirt behind it and then i used this full zip quarter knit because it kind of crosses over uh, a trend that we see right now and that trend is called the yard and maybe i'll talk about that in a little bit um and then the ladies piece is a sport tech piece. And again, full zips are trending, right? So we got her with a full zip here, uh, a nice kind of cadet collar. And uh, this is a new process for you, Rachel. You wanna talk about that? Yeah, that's our soft foam. So soft foam, I like to explain for those of you that haven't used it, it's kind of like a hybrid between silicone and flock. So it has a really, really soft hand like our soft flock but it has the dimension of silicone. So if you if those two were to get together and have a beautiful marriage, I would think that it would be the soft foam. Um, it's a beautiful product. You're able to achieve some really awesome detail in it, um, but it gives you that great texture if, you're, if you want dimension, but you wanna put it on a softer piece like that bomber or on different fleeces or Sherpas or a garment that's not, that that you wanna be able to have some give to, that foam is gonna be my go-to for sure. Um, not only is dimensional a huge trend, right? Any kind of dimension or texture or anything, um, it's a huge trend, but it's also a great price point, a five piece minimum. I mean, it's just gonna knock your socks off when it comes to soft foam. So, um, so that's why we selected that. 
And then I think just you have left. So when, when Fred's going through these pieces too, what I think is really interesting, we when we were talking about him the other day, we um, we bantered a little bit back and forth because what I considered to be corporate um, and versus retail for these four pieces were slightly different than what you consider to be corporate and retail. That's right. That's and the right. finishes. Well, I, I definitely felt like because of the design of the OGO brand that that has, you know, uh, opportunity to play in the retail space. Um, and, you know, and that's why I felt like this was maybe a little bit more towards a retail. And, and that might be just me because that, I consider OGO a retail brand versus Sport Tech and Port Authority, which, you know, is a private label for Sam Mark. I think of that as a lot of different, well, I think of those as a lot of different opportunities, but you could certainly wear this set right here in corporate. In fact, uh, with the work at home and the way that we're moving to an athleisure, leisure, or I, I've coined the phrase biz leisure, business leisure, um, you know, anything from the waist up is, is almost zoomable, right? So this could be a really nice complimentary piece for people that are working at home. And this might be more of a, a transitional piece where you would maybe wear it a little bit more out, like when you did go out of your house or out of a, a WeWork space or something similar. So, you know, there's no right or wrong answer in there. Uh, you just have to know the lay of the land and always ask good questions to your customer and find out what are they using the product for? What's the location? What's what kind of identity are they trying to you know achieve off of their product? Some of these products could be just corporate gifts. They could be for events. And so keeping all of that in mind, that's probably where Rachel and I had really good conversation about retail or corporate on these four pieces. Yeah. And I, and I think that goes to point out too, like your decoration, because you can see here that your decoration is very different, even though it's all left chest, um, even just like Fred saying zoomable, right? So sitting in the ladies transitional OGO piece isn't going to be maybe what you want to sit in all day versus uh, this bomber jacket. I'm calling it a bomber. Is that what you call it? Carry full zip? I'm the decoration lady, okay? Um, but the, it, and you guys will see a lot of left chest today. Obviously, we love to do unique placements, but for visibility purposes, we did do a lot of left chest. Um, but a lot of cool, unique placements that people are doing exactly for the reason that we are doing Zoom. So you're really looking like, you know, uh, not even half your body, just the top half of you, right? So, left chest, on the collar, on the neckline of something, on the shoulder. You want to get some really cool, unique placements, but you want to make sure that you're sticking like chest up because nobody's seeing if you're doing something cool on the pocket, on the bottom of your jacket anymore, um, unless you're running out, right? So keep that in mind when you're thinking about unique placements, uh, about getting away from even just a left chest or making your left chest unique in the sense that you could do like leather patches or you could do a foam or you can do um, that metallic ultra weed is really cool. Kind of hard to see on the camera, but once I apply it here, maybe you can see it a little bit better um, once I hold it up, but just unique colors, unique finishes, that's gonna be huge um, as we start to win all this business. But to Fred's point, um, some people will never get away from left chest. They love it. It's traditional, um, but you have to know what your customers are going to want, right? So that's when we're going to kind of walk you through what we're seeing as trends in corporate retail and workwear. So before we do, um, we covered the decoration methods that we have today, but some of the most popular decoration methods right now are full color transfers. So if you have not used it yet, Ultra Color Soft from Stalls Transfer Express is a beautiful full color transfer. You are limitless on your colors. Um, if we have to use an outline, we have the ability to use a clear outline with that product. So it gives you the ability to not have to alter your customer's logo. Um, a sweet minimum of 20 pieces, which is amazing. Um, so full color transfers there. And then we also have one, two of our most popular ones at Stalls ID are Subla Stop and Express Print. Um, and then emblems and Emblems and patches, you're going to see our embroidered patch and leather patch, and these are huge, huge for outerwear and caps. So obviously we're covering outerwear today because honestly, we could talk about outerwear for like five hours, um, but don't just pigeonhole yourself with these products into outerwear. Make sure that you're really expanding, like Fred said, and kidding. So if you're using soft foam, think about all the different pieces that soft foam could go on so you're able to then create an experience for your customer. Um, 
we have heat transfer vinyl, which is your soft foam, your silicones, your floss, your um, metallics, any of your single color vinyl that we love because it gives you a unique finish um, and then some dimension as well. And then reflectives and reflective is what it is. It is super popular right now because people are um, needing the ref reflectivity for standard businesses, right? Like your construction, um, medical, anything that's running in or out. Um, grocery stores though, they're open later or open earlier and open later. So the people that are pushing carts or people that are doing click lists for you or running groceries out to you or pharmacists that are running stuff to your car, if they're doing it in darker hours, think about adding reflectivity to their shirt because then you're visible, right? Or if you're doing 5Ks or you have just a run group or a gym that you're working with, reflective transfers are a game changer because you can make them fun by using a high-vis color reflective transfer. So a black transfer or blue or purple reflective um, or just your standard silver so that people then feel safe and they feel like they're seen when it's dark outside. Right. I don't know about you guys, but these winter months, they get to me because it's like five hours of daylight and the rest is dark. Rachel, that's a that's a really good point. Last last fall, last spring, we were talking about health and safety. Right. Those are big, important mm -hmm. topics to uh, the consumer. Right. Because we're all consumers first. And so reflective itself in any form on any garment is an awesome ad. And yes, it could be a construction or some type of outdoor industry. It could also be a school. It could be a walking group. It could be, uh, like to Rachel's point, the people that are out there doing delivery, curbside delivery, right? That's a That going forward, I think, is a really big opportunity for you to help people. And a reflective speaks to safety. And it's something as simple as taking one of these pieces that we've got here and adding a little reflective detail to it. Um, by all means, reach out to your uh, your stalls person and and get some more information about how to how to do that. So yeah, and I know there are some pieces you can kind of see the reflectivity on Fred's jacket right there on the Williams. Um, but there are some pieces at Samar that already have reflectivity built into them too. So if you're in the field or in the arena that you would need it to be certified, a lot of times your garment already is, and you can have some fun with your decoration while still staying within your brand guidelines. That's a good example right there. This is now this yep. is part of a safety product, but that's not reflective though. But that is just a nice black transfer on a safety piece. But your shirt's probably reflective enough that you don't need to have a reflective transfer, and then you can have a little a little bit more creative freedom with your transfer. Right. I believe this is the uh, ST850. This is one of Sanmar's. Um, well, this is one of my favorite pieces that I like to wear. And it actually, we make it in three colors where it actually have reflective uh, details built into the construction of the garment as an example. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so I'm going to cruise this along here. We're going to keep talking to you, but I'm going to decorate um, our first piece, so our transitional piece. Um, but I, you'll notice here, so you guys can all see my heat press. I could not find, for the life of me, our 11 by 15 platen. Um, so I'm going to just improvise and show you how uh, versatile all of our platens are. And this is our leg and sleeve platen. So 6 by 20 platen that comes with a lot of heat press packages. If you are in the market for a heat press, um, it's great to look at those packages. I do have some of these already pre-lined up. But um, when you're heat printing, you want to make sure because these, what I call corporate or like techie pieces, do have a lot of different zippers, linings, pockets, you want to make sure that they're hanging off the press so that you don't melt um, the zipper, okay? Because these, I mean, these aren't, the, these aren't inexpensive jackets. They're nice jackets, they're high end, but you don't want to be trashing them, excuse me, um, for, those, for those purposes, right? So we're just going to hang this up on here. I did already preheat this garment prior to um, jumping on live, just to save us some time. So for those of you that are watching, don't think that I uh, didn't do that. And I'm going to change our time here. No steps were skipped. No steps were skipped. I'm just being efficient. Okay. And we're just going to loosen up. So when I change the platen, for those of you that do have a, a hot product teaching at home, when you change your platens, you'll notice your pressure changes significantly. Um, so that's just what I was doing was adjusting my pressure. Um, so this is going to be your uh, 
high vis or high vis your um ultra wheat is going to be a hot peel 20 15 to 20 seconds you're going to fly your carrier off um and voila so there is your left chest you'll see a hot peel done um but i want to see you guys can kind of see the metallic -y. it almost looks reflective when you see it on camera but it is a matte or a black metallic so it complements this jacket really well with the gray um what color do you call this Brent? it's kind of a heather it's a heather gray yeah it's like a heathery gray um, you, it's a nice black color. zipper so you're really complementing both colors i think yeah i think you know you know how the paint and tone colors are you you can have a pink and they don't call it pink right okay so now this one's a little bit trickier but we are going to hang this zipper off rachel i was just going to add too while you're doing that that yeah. we, when we were talking about product we were looking for creative ways to uh decorate the product outside of the traditional left chest i know you brought it up earlier yeah and, um, we, we like to do that right i think customers like a little bit of variety and a lot of shirts and jackets now are starting to have these forward seams and sometimes those seams allow for you to get something that's a little bit more on the left chest right so take a, take a look sometimes when you're on sanmar use the uh the product images that are on the left hand side of, uh, of the style page and zoom in there and see if you can't see if there's any other alternate seams or anything interesting that you might be able to uh, show your customers as far as uh, placements for decoration. So this is a good example. This jacket right here has a seam line that runs on the top of the shoulders across. So if this Williamson excavating logo hadn't have been so, you know, left or right, you might have tried to put you know, a tag line, uh, you know, earth movers or something like that that runs right across that seam. So again, alternate uh, placements is extremely important when you get an opportunity to think outside the box that's a great start did we talk about well, the patches pardon i don't think we talked about the patches no we're not we're not there yet fred fred jumps ahead oh, okay i, I didn't know right. spill me. so now we have your finished piece this is uh one having fred here comes in handy so that he already has the finished pieces there so um it is nice, like we said, that um, that peek away zipper, right? So if you were to wear this open, you could see both logos. So we position this um, left chest logo a little bit differently so that when this does flap open, you still see the logo, um, but you're not running into um, cutting too close to like under the arm or anything like that. So you have a bunch of really cool, unique placements. So here's your um, branding on the inside. So this, I mean, I think this is a beautiful piece. So, uh, Stace, do you want to uh, throw up the ROI uh, slide? So we're going to show you guys how much money you're going to make with this, which it, truthfully is the most important part of the presentation, right? So the cost for your jacket from Sanmar is going to be $34.99. Your transfer, all the transfers that we have quoted here are going to be at the minimum price or the mini minimum quantity to order. So. At the minimum quantity for three inches, it's going to be a dollar fifty-five for the transfer. So your total um, investment in this is going to be thirty-six fifty-four. And then I always tell people we all calculate overhead differently. Whether you are a one-man show or you have fifty employees, it's going to be different. So calculate your overhead accordingly. You saw me; it took not even a minute to do the two different placements on here. Uh, these are going to retail anywhere from $55 to $60. And honestly, Fred and I were saying that you could probably even retail it for more. Um, so you have a profit here of $18. And we had this completed, like I said, in less than less than a minute for two different applications because you have a hot peel with your ultra weed. Yeah. We also talked about the, you know, the real true retail cost. And so with brand names, you know, you could hold more margin you should be able to hold mark margin. So if we took that $34.99, we rounded it up by a penny, you'd be at 35. So if you just keystone that, that should be up at $70. So let's just say $69.99. Um, and so that that should be really the starting point for the retail brands, right? I mean, that's 50% margin without decoration right off the bat. So 
Also, be careful too. Like some jackets uh, in wholesale catalogs are priced on an R, some are priced on a P. Sometimes you just need to pay attention to those things so that you don't get caught into, uh, you know, uh, less margin than you thought. And a lot of uh, brands, we have to follow what they call MSRP. And so they have a uh, sort of a ceiling that on the floor that they'll allow you to advertise it for. Um, so, you know, it's always good just to double check and make sure that you know what your true net is. And then I just say sometimes double it, right? That's just a, a easy layman's version of, of finding what the retail price might be. So I like profit of fifteen dollars. Rachel, did we talk about overhead or something like that? You have to remember. Well, the overhead is different for everybody because if we have people on here that are, you know, a one one man show or they're doing just an Etsy shop themselves or they have fifty employees, their overheads can be a little bit different. Right. Uh, and I also think that that's maybe how you can take into consideration about how to price it is if you want to grow or you want to pay off your machine quicker and you can charge $75 for that jacket, you know, your customer is going to pay for it. Charge $75 for the jacket. We're saying bare minimum, you can retail this at $55 to $60 and make $18. And if you're in the market for a heat press, you can have a heat press paid off in two jobs, depending on your quantities, right? So. Think about it like that um, and don't let it working with higher end items scare you because if you come to your customers with higher end products and higher end finishes, they're going to pay the high end prices for it. So we've seen, right? Good point. And, and think about the additional cost that, uh, I mean, again, we brought up uh, packaging earlier, right? Those, yeah. those packaging uh, pieces, you know, you've got to decide whether or not you're going to put those in at the cost of the margin, which is going to erode your margin, or are you going to include packaging and, and maybe zhuzhing it up a little bit, uh, adding a hat, adding a, a knit beanie, adding some gloves, adding some other things that you know bring those margins uh, fully together and bring out more margin than you probably thought you were probably getting. Um, you know, one thing we don't want to do is, is we don't want to give away product, right? We don't want to give away any of those accessory costs. So always keep in mind that sometimes the customers is expecting to pay for some of the packaging, right? So it's always good to ask the customer what their expectations are, what's your budget, you know, what are you willing to pay, and then work backwards. That's good advice. Yeah. Um, okay, so the second corporate, which we kind of mixed, uh, mix and match the shirt jack. This is where Fred and I differed a little bit. So you, I mean, again, know your customers and know what they want. I categorized this um, blue full zip as a corporate piece where Fred was saying that the, or correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you called this corporate. Yeah. We agreed. We agreed. Okay. It was, the, it was the other one. Okay. The shirt, so the, shirt jacket jacket to me, the shirt jacket to me was more of a retail piece, right? Yeah, exactly. I could, exactly. I could totally see us doing two different types of decorations on that jacket, by the way. Yeah, I really think that with the jacket or this piece, you can turn this into a streetwear piece quickly, um, depending on your decoration. So you yeah. can change your decoration and make it more versatile. Um, but this is the flock. So the flock is going to be beautiful because of this. You want to talk about this piece because it's really soft, but it's not fleecy. No, it's a, it's a, it's just a knit, right? So it, it gives you the appearance. Of it's the same uh, fabrication on the inside and the outside of the fabric, right? So in sweatshirt fleece, you turn it inside out, you've got the nap. And then on the outside uh, part of the sweatshirt fleece, you've got the, you know, the printable surface. So this is a really nice tight knit. Uh, I apologize, I don't know the weight off the top of my head, but again, a very nice full zip, casual piece, uh, layerable, whether you're wearing a t-shirt. In this case, I told you I put a Carhartt shirt underneath it. Um, we've seen it used a lot of different ways. I do see this, uh, I tend to see this in uh, a lot of healthcare settings. Uh, when a customer, in fact, yesterday, a customer was asking me to put a, a lookbook deck together. And every time he mentioned the word layerable, he wanted something that would go over a dress shirt or a polo or another piece. And I kept coming back to quarter zips and full zips because they're a great accessory piece. And so this is a perfect example of that. Rachel brings up a good point. You can use decoration to make something that it isn't. So, for example, this piece right here, this is a soft shell vest that Sandmar and its cornerstone line just got out this spring. And if you put a construction logo on the back of that, it would in, it would give you the impression that it was made for workwear. But to Rachel's point, streetwear is a 
big area where a lot of Carhartt and those brands in workwear space, they use this in a retail uh, way. They decorate it differently than putting an excavation logo on there. You might see uh, in the gaming industry, for example, right? You might see some of the gaming logos in here, right? Epic mm -hmm. Sports, Twitch, any of those uh, places that you might watch gaming. You can see a lot of co-branding and logoing, and those don't really have a lot to do with excavation and landscaping. That's true. They don't. But, but I mean, okay, like just to go off on a, um, on a t I'm a, I mean, I'm a millennial, okay? So like Carhartt is like a cool trend. So if even if you don't get your hands dirty, it's still cool to wear Carhartt or something like that, like to, like to to look the part that you're not playing. It's interesting. Rachel, uh, I, I, I wear Carhartt, but I wear Carhartt. You have a Carhartt beauty, don't you? Oh, I have all kinds of Carhartt. Yeah, you have a Carhartt beauty. Um, okay, so here's your flock, your finished flock. You guys can see that. For those of you that haven't um, used this material, you can really kind of see. Um, Gosh, so hard virtually. Um, but you can see a little bit of the texture in there. If you have not used our flock or our soft foam, um, call your rep at stalls or call our customer service and get a sample of that or get a one yard cut and play with it because it is some of our best material um, hands down. It has a beautiful hand to it. Uh, Stace, do you want to pop up the ROI slide for that jacket? Felt or flock feels like a little bit like felt. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot softer than felt, though. It has a much better yeah. give than felt. Um, okay, so this jacket, $19.99, call it $20. Um, that transfer at three inches wide is going to be $202. Um, and that is a five piece minimum for flock. So if you want to order some custom logos, all you have to order is five pieces. Um, overhead is going to be $2201. Okay, or overhead. Your total is going to be $2201. Potentially reselling for $40, if not $50, $55 for a total profit of you know almost $18, bucks, if not more. Um, that to me with one location left trash, that is so simple. It applies in 12 seconds. It's a warm peel. I mean, you can bang a hundred of those out easily, easily, um, in production and make a huge profit very quickly. Um, okay. So the next category that we're jumping into is our retail. So again, our retail is going to cover a lot of categories from, um, like, storefronts to Etsy shops. I'm, I'm really thinking a lot A lot of you right now are gonna be doing online base sales. Um, I know Fred and I, a lot of our customers are moving to on-demand stores or to storefronts um, online and that doing programs through that so that you can print as needed. And there's no better application than heat printing, in my opinion, um, to print on demand. So there's no, uh, or few, few of our items have setup fees and those are our patches. Um, but everything else, quick turns, you can sit on the shelf um, and print on demand so they can sit for a few months while you have orders come in too. So um, keep that in mind. Um, if you're not doing online, get it. Make a website, make a Shopify, check out Spirit Sale by Stalls. If you don't know where to start, um, we do have live, uh, what do you call those? Um, tutorials, I guess, on how to use it. Um, but you can do like a live run through with the people that do spirit sale and you can really get a deep dive into what it would be like to have a store. Um, are you doing, all are you talking products. about a live experience? Yeah. So like, well, it, oh, a demo. Like, there we go. Like a doing a live store. demo. <laughs> Same thing, uh, right? Pop-up store that we did. Yeah. 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 With exactly. Jenna, Jenna Hat, Pilt. Yeah, exactly. So before we would do live experiences and print on demand for you guys, but now since everything's virtual, um, you've got to move it virtual. So if you have any questions about that, again, feel free to reach out to your rep itself. If you don't know who that is, call our customer service team and we can get you in with the right people. If you don't know who it is at Sanmar, who their TM is, uh, do they just call? Yeah, you can just call customer service. Call customer service and they'll send them to the right person. Right. Cool. Yeah. There's 90, um, 91 of us out there. It's probably no not rest. 91 of us. Um, okay, so next we're going to get into our retail. So we've talked about this piece a lot. This is the reversible shirt jack. So with retail, you want to think special effects, unique placements, and high-end finishes. Okay, so this is where retail kind of lumps into a little bit with corporate, um, is that you can do high-end finishes with both. 
So if you think about it, when you're walking through the airport, right, or you're online looking at stuff, you're going to see stuff that's subtly branded. It's going to be very tonal. It's going to be very um, monochromatic, right? It's going, be, it's going to be very neutral. And then you're going to see some wild application. So what I mean by that is like glitter flakes, your foils, your metallics, um, any kind of dimensional like leather patches that we're going to look at, um, neon, pastels. You're going to really get into a whole different um, category of special effect. So you can really make your garment pop. And retail is a perfect space for you to do that because you can really, like the sky's the limit, right? Fred and I, whenever we work together, we talk to a customer. We like to just think as wild as we can get and reel us back in. And I really think that retail gives you the opportunity to do that and to get some really cool colors or those unique finish or uh, unique placements too. So like not everyone's gonna love a shoulder print, but if your customer's loving it, then throw it up there instead of on your left chest, right? So retail gives you that ability to really think outside the box and let your creative juices flow. Um, as I like to say, add some pizzazz to your, um, to your garments. So Stacy, since I already decorated this, do you want to throw up the ROI slide while we um, talk about it? But this is our leather patch, you guys. This is a 25 piece minimum. Amazing detail you can get in here. It does come in three different colors. So a light brown, uh, medium like caramel brown and then a darker brown um, depending on what your customer's finish is looking for you want to go through that one friend well we didn't really talked about it earlier and i showed you how you could do the reversible uh feature of that and i think when you have a reversible piece you have multiple areas to do decoration right i when rachel and i were talking about this piece i envisioned some kind of cool techie front left chest and then i said let's do something like a full back let's do something black metallic on that and so you know that gives us the opportunity to kind of open up the space of the garment i mean it is a full canvas just to be just waiting to be printed so i wanted to go back uh, for a second because you were talking about like retail and some of those little metrics in there and so um and i forget what the trillion dollar number was i gave you the other day on the phone but i told you in 2025 the e-commerce space, right, the direct-to-consumer business, is going to be in the trillions and trillions of dollars, right? So imagine dividing that by three. That's kind of where we're at today. So it really is going to triple and triple in terms of the volume that's available. And that's Etsy, right? That's influencer business on Instagram. It's all kinds of places where people can go online and find and shop, right? That's what we're doing because we were locked in for, what, nine months. Some of us are still locked down. I'm in my basement. What am I going to do? So with this, this particular piece, right, there's multiple areas to decorate. We don't always have that opportunity. But again, Rachel and I kind of collaborated on these two pieces to, uh, to be a little bit different. The other thing I want to mention is you have a lot of access to some great reps out there in the field. And we all would love to work with you on getting you some type of sample kit. I've always said in this industry over 27 years, if you don't logo it, you don't. You can't sell it if you don't wear it, right? You have to sometimes decorate your own brand on your product, and I feel a lot more comfortable decorating my product with different logo placements. And I've seen some of you people at trade show that you're very creative, so keep that up and wear that out in front of the customer. If you get the opportunity to be on Zoom, everything does have to be kind of upper upper chest, right, Rach? Mm -hmm. so think of you know, interesting places up here. We can think about seams here. We can think about running things vertical here. Um, sometimes we just have to explore, but work with your sales and your Sanmar rep or your other wholesale rep that you find a, a you know, your rep of choice. Uh, work with them to get a sample kit and get some, some get some gear on yourself. Yeah, uh, Stace. I know we're like halfway through. Do you have questions for us? I did have one that came through. This was in regards to some of the ROI slides you guys were showing. Uh -huh. Paul wants to know, if what if you have a customer who supplies their own apparel, like their own shirts, and you want to print on those shirts? How can you price that for your customers? Do you have any tips you could give, Paul? Fred, do you, what, what's your? I, that's, a, that's a great question, and it's somewhat difficult to answer, uh, but I will tell you that the risk of printing on garments that say come from Costco, or if your customers shopped at a boutique, or maybe they've gone online, they think they're trying to outsource you um, 
you know, and I'm guessing that these orders aren't like 50 jackets, right? I, I We have customers that'll go to Costco and buy 50 jackets and probably take them to your shop. Um, you know, listen, it's the risk, right? You have to have some kind of indemnification or something that's a sign or some type of, uh, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I would probably want to have some kind of release from the customer that if you are going to bring these garments to me, that there is a possibility, it is a possibility that something might not work out so great, right? Whether it's embroidery and the needles killed the garment or heat applied decoration and you've got maybe a, a little more pressure than you intended on it. Um, that's a toughie, right? Because then you're going to be responsible for trying to track down another large in what they bring to you. And our industry exists, right? The wholesale apparel industry exists so that if something gets damaged, one of these jackets, shirts, your hats, that you're able to, at a cost, bring another piece in. Right, Rach? Yeah. And I've, you know, we have customers do that a lot. I actually had somebody the other week send it to me. Um, and ask what I recommended for decoration on a piece. Um, but none of us had any information. And so that was really hard to say, does it have a water coating? Does it have any any kind of coating on it? Is it 100% polyester? Are we sure it is? Um, so you run into issues like that. But there's two situations that I've seen here. Is one, the customer's just gonna supply the goods and they're paying that cost. Um, so, I think maybe the challenge here is how do you upcharge as much as you are if they know how much the jacket is, right? Yeah. So while you're running the risk of maybe not knowing or not being able to get more after you test it, maybe you maybe we botch the test run or um, or whatever they want to order more and there's no quantity. Um, but the real issue, I think, the question is. How how do we upcharge a two dollar transfer fifteen dollars right and and it's truthful it's just being honest with your customer at that point is hey you know I can do this the this job would typically cost me or I would typically charge you forty two dollars for it um, since you're supplying the goods I'll chunk out the twenty dollars for the jacket and charge you twenty two and I think that maybe that's how you handle it but it, I, you know again it that's it's a great area because it depends on your relationship with your customer too. You know, do you have the relationship where you can say, Hey, if you're going to supply this, I'm, I mean, I'm still going to charge you my cost to do it. You know, you still have to turn on your life, your press, you still have to pay somebody or do the labor yourself. So, um, Rachel, I don't know I think that, uh, that brings up a really good point, right? Like to make sure that you're itemizing your costs, right? Know, know all of those costs ahead of time and maybe have a package where you know you're willing to take the risk, you're willing to take the jackets from the customer that brings them in from their own retail shopping experience, um, and you know you just basically have a hold harmless. Like, hey, listen, if I if I kill one of these jackets, it's it is what it is. But right. you're charging for you know those those costs that normally we're we're saying this jacket seventy dollars, and we've built all our costs into that, right? Um, and we don't need to itemize it out for our end user. But sometimes they're going to bring stuff to us, and we're going to need to be able to block and tackle that. So it's a great question. I don't know if we've answered the question. I don't know if we really can, because again, I'm not I'm not a legal expert, and I only have the experiences that I've dealt with in the past to give me you know a little bit of information for you. But um, yeah, it's certainly uh, it's more uncommon than it is common. Um, you know, I will say one more thing about this. If we can get out in front of our customer, if we can have a dialogue with the customer, and, and I granted maybe some of you people have a retail store where the walk-in business is what we're talking about. But if we have a book of business that our customers coming to visit us, it gives us a really good opportunity to always try to be out in front of them so that we can explain to them why we're in business. We're we're working with wholesalers who carry the inventory for us, and then we deliver a blank canvas, we decorate it on it, and we deliver it out to you. So you got it. Uh, Paul did say we answered it, so I hope I hope it was a good answer, Paul. <laughs> um, that's a, that's a tough one though. So I yeah I get it's just like I was in it. Vegas with your money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let's. Is, do you have anything else for us, Stace? That was the only question that came in, but it looks like we do have a question that just came in right now. If you have any polo shirts, I know we're not showing any polo shirts in this class today, but 
maybe at the end, Fred could show if he has any on hand to show through Sanmar. But yeah, we I don't... didn't pull any polos today just because we were solely focusing on outerwear. Um, and they give me outerwear to present on because I love jackets. Um, so I definitely took the whole hour to talk about outerwear. But we will see. We should have some time at the end. Or Fred can pull one while I'm applying. I'm yeah, putting the yeah. soft foam on the, the, that front love logo that Fred has on his. I, uh, I, I will, uh, yeah, I can take the time just as a few minutes while Rachel's doing the press work there. This, this, is, uh, this is my setup in my basement. I'm not going to lie. This is downstairs. I've got these uh, wonderful graphic panels that uh, come from a company called Showdown Display. And uh, I just use them to merchandise my space uh, when I'm doing my work on the road. Um, I definitely carry mannequins. I would encourage you to think about how you merchandise your product. How do you deliver that product? And so mannequins are kind of like the uh, body forms of choice for me. So uh, in my space down here, what I do have is I have probably five racks of product, right? I am a Samar rep. I try to carry as much as I can. I keep my hands on the product as fresh as I possibly can get it from, um, you know, from a new launch or something. Uh, but let's maybe table the polo uh, opportunity for another opportunity. But if somebody wants to really see polos, I suppose I could grab a couple. Yeah, if you guys think that Fred and I are doing a great job today, you can just request us to do another webinar and we'll do one on other stuff. Yeah. Outside of outerwear. Um, okay, so I am attempting to peel our foam. It is a cold peel, so um, I rubbed it on. For those of you that have any of our counter caddies or carts or anything, you know those things stay pretty cold even with a heat press on them. Um, so when I'm in a hurry to peel a cold peel, I just rub it on there and then we're good to go. Um, but you can see here the, maybe, you know, again, virtually it's tricky, but here's that soft foam. Um, can you show it a little bit flat, Rach? Maybe see some of that, just a slight raise. Can anybody see that? Maybe not. Sorry, my light, it's really bright in here. Yeah, um, kind of call us and get a sample. We have, we have samples ready of foam. If you, because here's the thing with heat transfers, we all know that you have to see them and feel them to believe in them. Um, and these are not, none of our transfers are going to disappoint. So let me see now that I have it zipped up if you can see. Um, okay, gosh, it's really see. bright. No, maybe not. Okay. Maybe Anyways, we'll take a big high res picture on our phone. Yeah, it's really awesome. You'll be able to see it after this, um, after the webinar. We will have our power, we have a whole PowerPoint about this, um, but we decided to be more engaging to talk to you guys. But in our PowerPoint, they do have some really cool photos of soft foam, so you'll be able to see the dimension in there too. Um, so look in your email for that. And then Stace, do you want to pop up the, um, oh, thanks Patricia, they said they could see it, maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. Um, okay, the ROI for this one. So, um, same thing. This one, I think you're really looking. I think it kind of depends too um, how much you're going to retail this. If you're going to do it for your retail space or your corporate space, because I do think that you could up you have an upcharge opportunity on both. Um, but especially if you do like any kind of branding, so any kind of personalization, which is going to be more corporate based, like doing um, names or numbers or um, subtle like uh, last name branding somewhere. If you have like a whole office you're hearing. Um, you can you definitely have some upcharge opportunities. So here you're looking at 1648 for the jacket, 202 for the transfer, and then so it's 1850 without your overhead. Retailing at 35. I want to see you could even almost do this at 45. Don't you think, Fred? Yeah. And you know, that's a great point. I was just thinking while you were talking about how I could totally see on Etsy or Pinterest or someplace, you know, this this exact look. But I would almost to see a little bit more fuller back as well, right? And that just adds more volume uh, to the sell, and it would probably yeah. bring that margin up too, right? Again, you know, if you're selling single pieces off of, uh, you know, Etsy as an example, I and mean, you certainly need higher margins because you might need, needed, you know, you got freight, you've got all those extra additional costs. But from yeah. a standpoint, you know, something that I could see in a, in a corporate pop-up shop is is maybe the location. Right, maybe just using a little script of the location at, at the cuff, or or you know somewhere off the back of the shoulder. So there's there's multiple ways to add value to this particular style with that process. And it is texture is a wonderful thing, and it actually brings a, like a bigger experience to to product when you can actually get customers to touch and feel it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I soft foam. I saw naf. Is it? I think it's naf. I hope I'm saying that correctly. It says this is soft foam, a material that would work on a baseball jersey. I assume it feels like felt. So it, the foam. Um, now, if I don't know if you were here when I said it earlier, but it is. If you use our flock, I think it's a really nice hybrid between our flock and our silicone. So it has the dimension um, of silicone, which is slightly more dimension or more of a raise than your felt or your flock. Um, and it just would depend on what your baseball jersey is made out of. I'm pretty sure without looking in front of me that our soft foam is compatible with cotton poly and blends. But I think Stacy has the link and she can throw it in there and it'll say on the when you click on the link what all materials it's compatible with. But I don't see why it wouldn't be compatible with um, baseball jersey because those aren't mesh. So I would I would assume yes. So Rachel, you and I talked about this foam process, and, and my first question to you was, are, is there the ability to uh, put multiple colors together? That's that's a tricky, uh, That would that be tricky for this particular process? I could see like a corporate logo needing two colors. Is that, is that realistic? Or? Yeah, so you have a few different options. Um, full color will be coming, so stay tuned. Um, but you can do pieces, just how you would like you're not going to layer, but you can you can use multiple different pieces of flat or a foam to create a full color image. But stay tuned, and you'll have an answer soon from Saul. I didn't, I didn't want to you know spill any secrets. Don't spill the tea. Don't spill the tea. And, and um, you know we're we're absolutely thrilled that we can show you a couple pieces. But um, I think just last year, I think we introduced during uh, the last year, 2020. Little, maybe close to 300 items. So, you know, from a Sandmar standpoint, we're always introducing new product. In fact, we just launched a new catalog a, a few weeks ago, and we've got, you know, a new golf brand in there called Travis Matthew. We've got a healthcare product coming down in, in May. We've got some great new ads to some of our sport tech collection. So, you know, I know that we're a little bit limited in what we're showing you right now, but again, that's what we're trying to do is say, hey, we've got a lot of product and there's some great decoration that you can put on these products. Yeah. Um, sorry, Stacey, I'm kind of jumping in here. Yes, you can sublimate on foam. Um, I believe Jenna said you can do it on flock too, but yes, you can on foam. Was there anything else on there, Stacey, that we missed question wise? I am just reading through. Let me see. Okay. Um, Michelle just asked, do you apply the leather patches with the heat press? Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think we answered everything up to this point. Okay. I'm just going to wheel you guys because it's almost the end. But let me cover these two real quick. So we have, I'll show you, um, Michelle, what press I use for those. Just because it is a, one of them is a 20 second application, one's a 40 second, it's a completely different press. I didn't want to risk my computer falling off of my mount. So <laughs> I didn't, because I'd have to wheel you around the room, but I did use our 360 cap press to do the application. So it has top and bottom heat to activate the adhesive on the patch um, from the bottom as well. Okay, so here are our next pieces. So I applied these earlier too because your hive is reflective. Everything else we just showed goes on at either 280 degrees um, or 300. Like there's a sweet spot for all of those. So I was able to print them all at the same applications or same settings. Um, but it takes a little bit for the heat press to heat up, probably like five minutes and I didn't want to kill that time. But this is the hive is reflective and this is the bronze, okay? So same color that Fred has on that mannequin that you've been looking at. Um, but it goes on at 350, so I didn't want to, like I said, wait for the heat press to pump up. But um, we have this jacket for workwear, which is wonderful. This is actually a cornerstone piece. I know I was saying Carhartt earlier, but it's like a Carhartt. Uh, it's a duck lock. Copy cat. <laughs> and then we have an actual Carhartt um, with the embroidered patch, which I also use the 360 cap press to do the application. But your embroidered patches are phenomenal. You can see the amount of detail you can get in there. Rachel, show the uh, Carhartt logo. I mean, it's so it's so simple. It's down in the pocket. Oh yeah, here it is. I mean, almost all Carhartt product is just a woven label sewn down on the product. I mean, how cool yeah. is that? Yeah, no, this is awesome. Actually, um, Fred sent me an extra one. I love this piece. This is super comfortable. I wore it the other day, uh, shoveling my snow. Um, <laughs> so, do you want to throw up those ROI slides real quick, Stacey, and we can cover those? Okay. 
Um, okay, so for this one, this, the cost of this event actually really surprised me. That it was, I thought it was gonna be more expensive. So thirty two ninety nine, or you thought it was Carhartt. Either way, I mean, it's a, it's awesome. I mean, it has great insulation, and I mean, it's super warm, but not. It's a soft shell. It's, yeah, it's a really nice, nice piece. So thirty two ninety nine for the jacket, four hundred four for that full back nine inch piece. Um, that's a five piece minimum, and then. So thirty-seven oh three total. I, I mean, I'm going to say this could even retail probably sixty-five. I think most of these items where they're ticketed at right now, you could probably upcharge ten to fifteen dollars on each. So fifty-five dollars at your bare minimum. That's giving you an eighteen dollar profit. So if you have an order of a hundred of these, I mean, you're going to pay off your cap press um, and then some. So that's an awesome win. Um, next slide is. That, okay, so the Carhartt ja or sweatshirt is me $29.99 for your cost, $4.47 for the embroidered patches. Those are a minimum of 25 pieces, so keep that in mind. Um, $34.46 total. I mean, do you think this is going to retail higher than $50, though, Fred? Uh, listen, I, I, uh, I'm optimistic. I think with, uh, with the right look, like this, this patch, uh, you probably can't see it, but it says uh Kodiak Valley Summit Ski Patrol, right? So so if I were at a ski resort, I would probably have to pay more for this. If this yeah. was, you know, a local business that had an embroidered patch, like maybe a landscaping company, I certainly would probably need to sharpen the pencil a little bit. What I'd like to point out is like, know how many pieces you're doing, right? You know, if you're doing a hundred pieces, it's going to be a little sharper price point than if you're doing just 12 or just six. Right, so keeping that in mind, um, and, and like I said, the the logo or the use of the product really plays a lot to how much margin you should probably be thinking about. I wouldn't just use a blanket margin. I know some people just have a calculator and they punch their number up and they have to hit a you know a thirty five percent margin or you know they can't keep the lights on. Well, you know if that's your floor, you need to try to push the ceiling. Right, so. I would say I would say in this particular example, though, Rachel, a ski resort, they would pay more for this. Oh, at a ski resort, that'd be one hundred and twenty dollars. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right, and, and and like this piece, if it didn't have the excavation logo on it, like I was telling you, uh, the the customers earlier, if this had a street logo, like if it was a racing car company, this thing would elevate it through the roof, right? You know, from yeah. a cost standpoint. Yep. So while I'm thinking about this, I'm kind of seeing some of the comments. So as you're looking at Fred, so Stacy, stay on Fred's face. Um, the for uh, if when you're looking to the left, you have the white bomber, the blue jacket, and the gray jacket. Those are all CAD cut materials. Those are going to be a five piece minimum from Sauls. Behind him is the leather patch. That's going to be your 25 piece minimum um, from Sauls. And then yep, there's another one. And then you're going to have the only full color we really have on here is an embroidered patch, which is which is surprising. Normally I do more full color than single color. Well, and then so this is different. Yep, yeah, full color. Um, so your two patches, your leather patches and embroidered patches are gonna be a 25 piece minimum. Everything else you see is gonna be a five piece minimum. So keep that in mind if you wanna just do like some custom sampling before you start doing your full runs, um, You, it's definitely easy to do that. Um, what other questions did we have on here, Stace? We just had one come through about nylon materials, but I did answer. If you want to chime in, please feel free. But um, for nylon, I just know in past webinars, we recommended Gorilla Grip 2, 3M Reflective for visibility looks, and our super tech materials like Sublistop. Yeah. Um, but if you guys have any others that you like on nylon, go ahead, Fred. <laughs> so I, I do want to point out that I have this Carhartt bag here. And, and one of the questions that Rachel and I were talking about in our download before we were, you know, doing our presentation was finishes on some products, right? DWR finishes. Rachel, do you want to just maybe talk about that? I don't think that we had any DWR finishes on this product, but if we did, you know, it might be something like this. Do you want to address that? Oh, the water resistant? Is that what you're yeah, talking about? Because yeah. a lot of bags and jackets might have a, you know, a water repellent finish to it. So... Yep. So there's so that kind of lumps in the, the two products I was just going to talk about. So water, water resistant coatings, water repellent coatings are like everyone's new favorite. Right. And they are tricky because no two are the same. Um, always, always, always test or test, test, 
test them, um, always run one sample just just in case. And if you if it's a higher end garment and you really don't want to run the risk of maybe ruining it, find a very subtle piece um, on the inside or something that has the same material and just put some transfer there and see how it works. Um, but the two products I'm going to recommend for nylon are your ultra color stretch from if you're a self transfer express customer. If you're not, just go on register on their website. Super easy. Um, Ultra color stretch is going to be phenomenal. If you have worked with Aquatrue before, it's going to be very similar. Um, it is a water-based transfer, so it's going to be beautiful on nylon. Um, also, will work on some water-resistant coatings. So here's the problem with water coatings, though, is we can't guarantee anything because, like I said, the coating is very, it's different on every single jacket. Um, that being said, the ones that I have used successfully um, or have not heard any complaints on, I guess, are Subla Stop, um, Gorilla Grip, like Stacey saying, and Ultra Color Stretch. So Subla Stop and Ultra Color Stretch are gonna give you both full color finishes. Gorilla Grip is gonna give you a single color finish depending on your design. So it just really depends on what your artwork looks like um, and if Gorilla Grip, Grip will fit or if a full color is gonna fit better. Um, does that help? So that, that kind of answers both questions, nylon and water coating, because I would recommend those three for both products. But I also would always recommend testing a water repellent jacket, always. Um, it looks like two more questions. Uh, Craig wants to know what transfers do we offer that are on gang sheets? And then we have another one about which patches do you recommend adhere best to those foam trucker hats? Uh, they wanted to know before they order the patches. Yep. Um, gang sheets, anything from Stalls Transfer Express, you can get on a gang sheet. Um, so they are, I represent all companies um, within Stalls, so I'm here to help you. Um, if customer service, if you call into Stalls, we'll redirect you to Transfer Express. Um, but Transfer Express does all the gang sheeting. Um, for those of you that don't know, we take a sheet, you know, like an 11 by 14 sheet and what we call is gang sheeting. So you can gang as many images on that sheet as possible. Um, so if you have multiple different jobs, but you only need five or 10 of each logo, um, you can really, you can print them all in the same line together. If that makes sense. Did I explain that well, quickly and well? Um, for the foam, I would say any of our patches. I put I put leather on it because I think it just looks really cool. Um, it's very trendy. Uh, Fred has a CAD print on there, so it's not actually a patch. Um, but leather patches are really popular in those. So are embroidered patches. And then we haven't we didn't show today, but we do have flex style too, um, which is a three dimensional emblem that works really well on those caps. Honestly, any patch. We have our perma twill too, which is a submated twill. Um, I call it a faux patch, uh, but that has a beautiful finish that people love to put on caps too. Um, is, that, is that it? That was it for questions. The only other closing comment, we did get a lot of people saying they wanna see another webinar with you guys collabing. So in the comments, if there's any specific apparel that you're interested in, leave it in the comment section so we can see it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been a pleasure being with you guys. Thank you for coming in. I know um, an hour out of your day is very valuable. So I hope we added some value to your business. Um, Fred and I love to do this kind of stuff. We love to help you guys. Um, win and be successful. So any questions that you guys have, let us know. Um, but we'll, uh, I think we answered most of them here. And then if you need help from either Stalls or CMR, just reach out to our customer service um, teams and they can kind of, it's the easiest way to get to people. So they they know who to send you to. Um, and if you say, ask for, I need to talk to Rachel, they'll send you to me. So I, I will say uh, also too, maybe, you know, if you have topics that are interest to you, right? Yeah. Maybe happy to address topics we didn't really yeah i think headwear would be a, a next big one um well sorry i'm breaking stuff over here um would be another big one um, that i see a lot of people rolling in with um cool so thanks everyone for your time we appreciate it yeah